Welcome everybody to Command Combat Battle Reports, and today we have the newly released Steel Division 2, which is the Eastern Front of World War II, uh, with the Germans versus the Russians. Uh, this is where it got really nasty, very bloody, uh, and just a lot of death and damage and destruction, all that sort of thing. I mean, World War II in general was that way, but this particular area was the worst. Um, and it being the second in the series, they should have some improvements, so this should be uh, quite interesting. We have the Germans on the left and the Russians on the right. Let's take a look at the Germans first. Uh, you can see the icons pretty much show you what they are. Here you have mostly Panzers. Uh, th this game is broken into fa three phases, phase A, B, and C. A is supposed to be like recon, B is supposed to be the meat of your army, and C is like your closers, your really heavy armor, stuff like that. But it looks like they are starting with some heavy uh, some heavy things. I mean, you have your Panzer IVs up there with some trim wagons. These are usually what you'll have in the recon. Uh, department, but uh, yeah, they're gonna start strong with uh, with their armor and just kind of go in and try to hit them hard. Uh, looks like some armored artillery there, and you've got an SDFK, which uh, it looks like it has some mortar inside of it, and some more uh, Panzers. Actually, I guess if we pull back, you can see more what it is, and they, like you can see the little guy that means infantry, the um, the uh, binoculars there. That means that they are recon, real true recon, which basically they will be able to find where the enemy is. While meanwhile the tanks will go and uh, really do the damage, and some infantry in this truck back here. Uh, looks like they're on the German far right. Oh, and yes, there's some there more further back. Looks like they probably will go up here, take this town, and then uh, push forward with the armor. Uh, right here behind them, looks like you have a little bit of infantry with some anti tank guns to uh, hold off that large area right there in their front. And over here, yes, you have uh, quite a lot of uh, trucks here, a lot of their infantry. Looks like they're going to take it up with that, with a little bit of armor support. So maybe they'll probably go up and take that town, hold that, or maybe those woods, and just sort of hold their position. Uh, you do have this large hill here, so uh, it looks like they're going to want to, and actually, for some reason, oh, it looks like that's probably where one of them is going to go. It's not where they are right now. I was wondering how they set up in that uh, outside of the deployment zone there. Uh, over here, we have the AA with uh, another SDFK behind them, so probably their infantry support to try to you know defend them. Um, over here, what you've got uh, so some anti-tank. This is actually not big anti-tank. This one right here is one of the small anti-tank guns. Uh, you know, like a. Oh, uh, I'm one. <laughs> For some reason, the name is escaping me. But he basically one of the. Anti I mean, it's like a bazooka, but it's not a. It's a German version of that. Uh, anyway, uh, the Panzerfaust. There we go. All right, infantry and uh, no, the mortar. This one's a little bit more of an odd mixture. I mean, you do have some of this uh, recon here. I like the motorcycles. They're always fun. Um, and then a lot of recon here, so it looks like they're probably going to probe more on. This is, looks more like the type of uh, stuff you'd have for a probe, which is interesting because you got the town there. You'd think they'd have more infantry there, but they're going to probably just probe that town and see what, what's what there. I mean, you do have some anti-tank uh, and infantry. I mean, it's a good mixture, but it's really, to me, it looks like more like a probe force. Over here, once again, sort of a mixture, but a little bit more strong on the infantry, so they're probably going to try to make a push there through that town, and he's better at dealing with towns, and the far left you have more armor. So it looks like that's sort of the uh, German uh, plan here, is to have armor on the flanks, and more of a mixture in the middle, and then with their anti-tank guns and infantry just hold this area. I mean, you don't need very much. It's a big open area, any tanks go in there, those anti-tank guns will go off on them. All right, over here on the Russian side, you have way over on their side, it looks like they're gonna start strong with armor as well, although it looks like it's lighter armor, especially uh, you have the stewards right here, uh, which are sent to them uh, thanks to the US, uh, helping what will become more of an enemy later on, but anyway, um, and their lend lease program, that was what we're from. You got a flak uh, and an air thing, so in case any aircraft come along, you do have oh, one of the medium tanks. Oh no, this is the tank hunter right in there, and backed up by the um, uh, oh again from the Lynn Lease program. You'd almost think these are Americans. Sorry, the cameraman is drunk. The camera work on this is actually quite difficult. Uh, anyway, uh, actually that might be a Russian um, vehicle. I you know because it's the the Americans did send over quite a lot with uh, to them. Um, but uh, you know, sometimes they do have their own trucks or their own vehicles. Um, but so many of these look like they're from the Lend Lease program. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it looks like you do have a lot of armor here, armor here, but it is more of a recon armor kind of an area. 
And same thing over here, so it looks like they're going to do a lot of armored type of things, especially in this first. You have tank hunters, you have uh, light armored uh, vehicles like the Stuarts, um, which are fast, but not that well armored. Uh, over here on this side, you've got, uh, all right, again, sort of recon, you do have a truck, but then you got armor and backed up by the, well, what, how do you pronounce those? It's the Spahis, uh, which are more like light armored vehicles. Uh, right over here, towards sort of for the middle. Looks like they pretty much are even across the board doing the same kinds of things. So the Germans, uh, while the Germans have strong armor on their flanks, the uh, the Russians here are doing more even. Although right here, what you've got is more of the I was gonna say AA, but it looks like they have triple A right there in the center, uh, and more armor over here. Oh, actually, one of the uh, larger tanks over here, but it's, it's still a medium technically. Uh, and just the, some of the recon. You can basically see what they have there. Here, right here you got their machine gun. And over here you got several machine guns. That's interesting. I wonder what they're doing again. Because you got several machine guns and you got um, oh, what do you call it? Recon here. But yet there's not really much of a town here. So unless they're going to go in these woods or something, because you don't really want those machine guns out in the open. They can you know do a lot of damage, but they can also be uh, you know, very fragile. So it'll be interesting to see where they go. You have this, it'll be really interesting to see where this guy's going. He's machine gun all the way out there in the middle. Maybe he's just going to try to hold this position against the field here so no infantry can just run across that field. And finally, way on their flank, you have this flank is a little less in terms of armor. Well, no, actually, near the front, they have heavier armors. Less, but it's a little stronger than like the Stuarts. Backed up by some AA and some more re you know, regular recon type of situations. Um, so yeah, it really looks like Russians are doing more evenly across. Oh, and they also have this one right here, the Studebaker. It's the uh, the bear's natural habitat. And bonus points to anyone who knows where that comes from. All right, so all along here, Russians are basically even, while the Germans tend to be stronger on their flanks, and in the middle have sort of more of a mixture of a lot of things. Uh, Terrain-wise, it looks like over here on the German le uh, German right, Russian left. Uh, you got some of the hills, but then this long line of uh, buildings would be a good defensive point for the Russians. Uh, over near the middle, where it looks like the Germans seem to be already going, there seems to be one big hill. It'll be just basically king of the hill here in the center. And a lot of towns separated by a river. This should be some really interesting fighting, uh, especially because it's not one side trying to cross. It's both sides, you know, will, they'll have some on the left and some on the right. And then supporting each other, they're going to have to go across that bridge. And over here you have a, a, like a military camp facing off against the town and a lot of open ground on their right. So we will see what they choose to do. Again, I apologize for the camera work here, but it is just a little more difficult on this than it is on some of the other games. But let's, uh, let's get going here. Let's push play. And of course, the beginning of, uh, of this game it always begins with uh, both sides just kind of racing towards each other, and each side knows what's, where the other one is. We, of course, can see all of them, and the Germans have brought out a plane. Let's see what kind of plane this is. Is CR-42, whatever. Um, oh, it's one of their biplanes. I really always I enjoy these. That you know, World War II, and we're looking at biplanes. And that is, it is a uh, recon type. Or it's doing its recon, but of course. If you it learns what's over there, a lot of AA, and it goes and crashes and burns. The Germans are moving their recon up here, or I mean, sorry, the Russians are moving their recon up here to get into the cities to make sure that they're clear. Um, Germans are bringing one of their recon up here to check on this hill to see what's up on top of the hill. Looks like the recon and the infantry way over there on the side are going to see each other. Uh, Russians have uh, some of their machine guns going up into the camp there. Oh, pass it, bypassing the camp. They're going to try to get that machine. I would have stopped that machine. Well, I guess it looks like they're going to have one machine gun there and then move forward. And they are just about to run into some of the Germans here into this town. It's going to be machine gun versus uh, anti-tank kind of a situation. Uh, all right, so this should be pretty interesting. They're starting to get up there in the hills there. Uh, German, uh, and the Germans have lost their um, what do we call it, recon up there. And it looks like their anti-tank was already on its way and being sniped over here by one of the Russian snipers. Meanwhile, German infantry have dismounted over uh, the kind of center, going up to this hill, and they have taken this uh, encampment here and are pulling back to hold that. 
And it looks like, uh, like a lot of the beginning, you have a little bit of back and forth. Both sides have pushed forward a little more than the others, than the other side. It looks like the German uh, armor is just sort of stalled. They're going to sit here and protect the artillery while the artillery lobs uh, shots into the Russian infantry. Just running across that field there and getting shot at. So, and now the Russians are bringing up some of their armed, armored vehicles here on their left, the German right, and pushing back their infantry, a number of their infantry, but they're going to run into that armor, but the armor is already falling back. Must have been that they got hit or just afraid of that armor. I'm actually rather surprised. Um, because that Russian armor did not seem quite as powerful. Okay, going back over here towards the center, we have their infantry has stopped in this camp, and is, that is making the Russians stall. You've got some uh, anti tank, anti tank gun there that's not going to allow the Russian armor to go over there. They just know that's what's going on now. Here's where that really interesting part I was talking about. You have the Germans have pushed up into the town and have taken a defensive position. They are getting lobbed with artillery. They are facing off in the uh, woods there, but the Russians are pulling back. It looks like the Germans really have taken this part of the town. Uh, meanwhile, they're pushing forward on the, the other side of the river there. Uh, so they're doing pretty well, although they are going to run into some armor there pretty soon. And the Russian armor can be maybe less skilled, but very, very strong. Okay, now you have some armor going out here, but it uh, looks like an anti-tank gun just missing him. They, he's, yeah, he's running up behind him there. Looks like they're going to go get set up, and the tank just doesn't see them. Oh, and he got hit. Looks like from the other Russian tank, which won that. Is that a KV, I believe? Yes. KV-1E, those are pretty powerful. So, German Russians have uh, taken control here, and are now starting to surround this one little group of infantry, and the rest of the infantry is uh, hold, trying to hold out here in this town, keeping their mortars protected. Uh, further over to the left, you have, they have set up inside of this town, trying to hold off the Russians that are coming to them. And they have set up here in this, uh, in the woods, so the Germans have kind of taken control of their left flank. They are not pushing forward very much, but they have taken control. The Russians have a lot of things, but they're not able to really make much movement forward. They are, uh, let's see, in the center here, looks like the Russians are managing to push through in that town and getting as far as that town is controlled. They have the little control center. The Germans uh, have a bulge here in which they are holding steady, but they are not necessarily making any new uh, ground. Up here, on their right, they finally brought their uh, armor into it, but that armor just keeps seeming to be hit, not destroyed, but bounced back, or <laughs> falling back. Uh, with the uh, with the um, shots bouncing off of their armor. The Russians are taking advantage of that, pushing forward with their infantry. Um, and it looks like they are going to go in on that, uh, whatever's over there, which is like that anti tank gun and a few other things. So, now they are uh, firing at that infantry that's coming from those woods and managing to push them back. So it's sort of a back and forth type of thing. The Russians really seem like they are rather deep. They have a lot in their backfield that are not going up, but I guess, we, as you can see, they're getting a lot of bailed out uh, signs, and so that's probably why they're not wanting to push forward. Those are, after all, stewards, and as we saw, the Germans have brought in some uh, bigger tanks, and now they're bringing in some air power to try to take out those anti-tank guns that are protecting the center. Uh, it looks like they missed, but they are continuing to fire at them, taking advantage of that, uh, of that fear that's on them. It looks like shots going back and forth and overall, let's take a look overall the field. You can see that the Russians are very slowly moving forward on their left, the German right. But the Germans have pushed forward on the center. However, the Russians are coming back with some of their bigger tanks, or at least their tank hunters, uh, and are going to make some push back at them. Um, and the Germans have just a few pockets, but the Russians in general are really making a push forward. And the Germans look like they're trying to uh, fill those holes with some more stagnant type of uh, weapon right? they don't have the uh, uh, the larger tanks it looks like they have more like anti-tank guns, machine guns, that sort of thing. You do have the uh, anti-air weapons that are pointed here to uh, protect against anything. Actually it looks like this is more an anti-air uh, weapon to keep the uh, airplanes off their, off their backs but this one looks like it is placed in such a way as to uh, protect against attacks. There's one, you can see the gun itself is pointed towards the ground. So they're more uh, firing at infantry, you know, coming at them, which was 
actually uh, illegal. You were, you know, in the rules of war, you were not supposed to use AA against infantry, but nobody followed that rule. I mean, it is war. It's, uh, there are certain rules of war, but there are also certain rules to just simply wanting to stay alive and wanting to win a battle. Now, the Russians are coming forward, it looks like, with their KV coming forward towards the woods there because they don't believe that the Germans have anything to stop them. That is one thing about World War II. We see in uh, you know, a lot of like musket age type of things, you can't send one guy up against a lot. But in this, you can just send one large weapon up against a lot of people and just cut through them like butter. In this particular case, it's just one group. However, that one group might have anti-tank weapons, so I am curious. I'm kind of ignoring a little bit of the rest of the battle because I'm curious what's going to happen here. And yes, they do have some kind of anti-tank weapons. Uh, he's very close to those woods. A little more close uh, than... Oh, because that's why they moved forward. So the, that anti-tank weapon was taken out. So now they feel safe. And the flamethrower comes through. And starts to make it really toasty warm for them in there. They're trying to find the ammo. And the machine gun's coming back at them. Which one is going to take this? It is a lot of flames, but it is also a lot of machine gun fire. And the tank comes out uh, victorious on that. They have taken them down. The flames did not find the ammunition on there. And he's just sitting in that warm fire going, Mmm, wow, we needed some uh, the heater broken this thing. So we needed that. So now the Russians have taken that uh, that victory position. All the flags are where they both sides want to take uh, positions. They have now brought some of their armor forward, and they are getting ready to um, push forward on that town, which is being held by the Germans along a long line. The Russians, of course, do not know exactly what they have in there. And they really haven't brought a lot of the things forward. They still have a lot of their um, reserve back there. This is being played very much with the Russians using a lot in reserve, keeping a lot in reserve, and the Germans are just putting everything on the line there, everything right up front. And over here you have infantry and an armored car just on that bottom slope, basically waiting for anything to come up over. Again, sorry about this camera work, it's just sort of really movie and right up over that hill you do have some armor it is wisely staying still because they know they do have some weaponry that can be used at close range up here you have this is really behind enemy lines these survivors in that town have been slowly whittled away by what the russians have meanwhile the russians are pushing forward with that more kv1s really heavy tanks against what the uh, uh the germans have here the germans are trying to hold them off just with a mortar that is not going to do much good when they get to them. That's better for longer range. Uh, now the Germans on this side, on their right, are actually using a little more of a tactic of having a reserve. Uh, they do have a Tiger there, uh, and that's hardly even a reserve. That can just fire so far to the point where it can just sort of sit back here. And it looks like it's behind some trees, but I'm sure it has a line of fire. And it can just hit anybody going across that field. So basically you can see that field is not being utilized. Although it looks like these Russians are trying to go, they would like to go there, but they're behind that hill because they know that uh, as soon as the, uh, that Ru Russian tiger, or the German tiger, hopes on, opens up on them, they're just going to be annihilated. The rest of them are behind that hill. It is really kind of a game of uh, both sides being on the other side of the hill, waiting for their reinforcements to come along so that they can, uh, you know, come up over the, uh, there and, um, and annihilate the other one. Uh, but it, it, we are coming close to the end of this battle, so, it, you know, the Germans really need to make a move, and I think the, the Russians at this point have kind of put themselves in a position and are saying, okay, I dare you, brah, you just come over here and we'll deal with it, but unless you're going to do something. And here, the uh, Russians have made a push across that big open field. The Germans had some things that uh, take them on, but they've either been destroyed or they're trying to move them forward, and you can see they're now getting rocketed. They do not have enough in the way of a, a along here, and you do have a little bit here that's firing at them, but just nowhere near enough. They're too fragile, uh, too open to that uh, anti-air fire. You do have this infantry, one infantry unit going around for it, but you know, whenever you see burning vehicles, yeah, that is not something you want to drive into. They realize that they're now backing up, uh, and they're going to have to man any direction they go. It's going to be trouble because going to the left, you just have those with it, or you have, you know, clearly people are getting killed up there on the right is a hill. So they're going to disembark, and looks like they're going to start marching up that hill. The Russians have abandoned that hill and are going down into those woods. Again, no, no reason not to. You don't need to be a threat. All Really, here's what the Germans need to get, is there is this flag here, and they need to uh, capture that position. The 
the Russians have it and are protecting it, but the Germans just do not have much to go at them with. Look at that, you just have this one uh, uh, self-propelled artillery piece. Oh, no, that's a marker, isn't it? Uh, yeah, an anti-tank gun uh, and, uh, what was it, an infantry unit here? Something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, an infantry right here with the heart. Oh, it's the infantry with a heart. A heart of red, not a heart of gold. Oh, but now they do, are going with an infantry up here. They have attacked a tank that is now bailed out, and it looks like the Germans may be able to take it, but they have to destroy that tank, they not just bail it out, finish them off, and then finish off this infantry, and they do not have much time to do that in. They do, they could pinch them because they have a tank uh, here, and then they have, oh, but right here, all they have is recon. Recon is better at finding things, not necessarily at killing them. So they really have to back it up with the ones here. They really have to push forward, and they're not. They're just, it looks like they're just too afraid to make their move on that flag. And of course, that's not the only flag they need. They need a bunch more to do something. I mean, you gotta get to this town, which is right over this hill. I do understand there is this fear that you know, you could get cut them from behind because you know they've done this huge bulge here, uh, and now of course the Germans are pushing forward with a couple of tanks. Oh, with one of the tanks, and it looks like the uh, Germans are just staying back there, waiting for them. And the Russians realize that they're waiting for them, and so they have just simply put it. Oh, it looks like some friendly fire there. Uh, so that it looks like they're uh, doing some um, artillery down on them and are scaring them away. However, they're, they're going to run forward. With uh, a little bit of what they have. Oh, and there you got your anti-tank gun going right after that tank, and looks like they took it out. They uh, killed the crew, and the tank is pretty useless for the crew. So now the Germans need to really push forward and get inside that town and take that flag. Uh, all along here, actually, let's pause for just one moment to take a look at what all we have. We already saw here at the bottom that the uh, the Russians have this big bulge here. They don't really need to go do anything more to prove anything. In fact, they sent in a reinforcement of uh, another tank. The Germans have to push forward and do something here to answer back to that if they're not gonna, you know, if they want to not be completely defeated. Um, and then maybe if they can push forward to this flag area here. The Russians do not have a huge amount there and the Germans have all of this they can use to try to pinch forward in there. Meanwhile, they have this group. that If they were to do that, then that would help these guys to be able to push forward with a little more confidence that they're not going to get pinched from behind. You do have uh, some units here that really should be pushing forward here, and that would protect their other flank. Plus, it would help them take this one flag. The Russians are doing a really good job of going up to a position and holding it, not trying to get greedy and go after you know more ground or whatever. Um, you have now, you know, and that's one of the things. The Germans have things like a tiger, which is almost unbeatable by a lot of what the Russians have. Um, I say almost because not completely, but they really need to be using them to get in there. You got panthers, I mean tigers and panthers in the same area. They really need to be pushing forward. I mean they, yes, they have this flag for now, but not for long. Although the, I know that they probably are being a little cautious because there is a tank hunter down there, so they're a little nervous about that. But they, they really need to be pushing forward. They do not have as you know the luxury of as much time as they want. Over here, they're a little bit weaker in terms of numbers. Uh, the Russians have taken this with a lot of strength, so it might be this would be the place where the Germans should defend and not be pushing forward. They do still have this small skeleton force here, uh, you know, in this little town that they've had most of the game, but um, that's really kind of useless at this particular point if they're not going to be able to back it up. It looks like they are defending this town, which defends it from two directions, defend it from their upper left and from their upper right, which is two places that the Russians are definitely coming. So, uh, and in terms of flags, there's one over here, but it really looks like that's something that these other, these other forces over here on the right need to take care of. Um, and the uh, Germans, at this point on, the, on this particular flank, it, doesn't, it looks like they mostly have defensive type of uh, units anyway. Um, the Germans do have a little bit they can push forward with, like the KV and, the, you know, another KV-85, they're coming in, um, but I don't know that they really have enough to take on what the, the Germans are defending with over on this particular side. They do have a couple of tanks that maybe they can make a push forward. You have the transmission damage on that one tank that we were watching earlier, and it looks like they're bringing up armor, so they're probably going to be making a push here on their far left while holding them, you know, about here. And Like I say, they have to make a, a move at some point soon here, or it's just going to be a defeat without them really giving much of a chance. Looks like they're getting themselves set up and maybe we head through the woods or something. They are firing at the infantry that was over there. 
Let's take a look at these peaks here. Is that a captured? No, oh, come on, I thought it was a captured uh, N24. It looks like they're getting up there behind the woods. They have a lot of burning vehicles there, so it's like one of, probably one of those things that they've been trying to push through it. You can see the crew has been killed inside of this front one, so everybody who's up there before has been killed. That does not bode well for new uh, units that are coming up when it's just seen all these burning vehicles and if nobody else can succeed, it makes them think that they can succeed. So, it, this is one of those situations where it's sort of a little bit reversed. It usually was the Russians using mass numbers uh, against a powerful German unit, but in this particular case, you've got a uh, less powerful German unit against, uh, a lot, uh, against the more powerful, uh, uh, more powerful Russian. Um, so they're bringing in mass numbers. And it looks like they are managing to make that one fall back while they're firing. So yeah, the Germans are making this move here on their left flank. And uh, yeah, firing back in the infantry. The Russian infantry comes up over the hill, sees what's going on, goes, I don't want any part of this. Let's take a look from their point of view. Looks like one, some of them are just full hard to get. Uh, they, are, they are Russians. And they're just going to go in there while they while they're working. The Germans are just back. Oh, and I lost track of this. Uh, oh man, they are really going after that one KV, but they, they just cannot destroy it. That is the problem with it. So the Germans are moving in to get a closer shot to hopefully penetrate that. But look at how much damage that thing is done. Uh, it might have been killed, but it's just it's still up. It's just holding off with all of that punishment. That is a real Russian steel right there. Oh, you just see pieces coming off of it, but it stays up against all of that punishment. That is some harsh punishment against them. And we have really light German tanks here. That is a problem for the recon types. I'm not sure if those are Panzer twos or ones, but probably not Panzer ones, but maybe Panzer twos. Ah, and there we go. Finally, the driver knocked out, leader knocked out, in case. So they killed a bunch of people that much to kill off some of their crew. So, Let's take a look at the rest of the field here. So it looks like the Germans are starting to make their push on the left. I don't, but there, okay, there's a flag back there. They can maybe take it, they can sweep over, take this one. I'll be around holding this down. Really don't have much hope to uh, push up from here. The Germans have made, uh, defended pretty well, and the Russian, uh, I mean, the German, Russians have defended pretty well. You know, actually, the Germans do have this infantry. They would have to take it out of the town, but I think they're trying to hold that town against Russians from here and Russian from here. They can come from two different directions, so I think they're trying to hold that so they can make their push here, which looks like they are starting to. Now you do have a heavy tank right there. There is a heavy... I think it's... Oh! Oh, no, no, no. It's a, uh, looks like it's a Sherman with a long barrel. So, maybe a Firefly or something like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, so they're holding back, and it looks like the Germans were trying to make their, their push, but they're getting pinched from the side. They're going to try to bring in their um, Panzerfaust to try to take, get that Firefly from the side. Meanwhile, the Germans do have their own armor, who's pushing on this side, but it looks like they're having difficulty. Oh, it is a Panther, though, so Panthers will usually have a pretty good time against where they're going against. They do not have great side armor, however. They are fantastic in the front, fearsome and scary in the front. So if something comes at them from the side, they will not have a good day. It looks like they are going to try to go after this uh, Russian tank that's here in the woods. That's going to be a little hard. If, if they hit, it's it's all over. They're going to take them back to them. Oh, and there is the fire's coming in. It'd be very hard for difficult for anybody to get through that armor. And as you can tell, these these tanks can really fire a long way. And they're I can't even see. There we go. It's, I can't even see where that tank is. That's it's firing at it. It is so far out there. That'll be interesting to see, to see who all can. Yeah, way back here. So, anyway. Oh, and it looked like it was a victory for the. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, we were the Germans, so it's saying victory. So victory for the Germans, which is interesting. Uh, you know, I want to try to take a quick look here at the field itself, but it looks like they do not actually have that. So you could see where that was. I don't know exactly how that happened, where the Germans 
uh, push through, but apparently they must have pushed through on that uh, on the side with all those tanks and managed to uh, pull it off, be uh, and maybe from their flanks, because that was where the Germans put their strength, was on the sides, and so you saw on the left side, we did not quite get to the right side because I was fascinated by that German, uh, or by that uh, tank battle, but that must be it, that must be where they, they uh, did that. Let's take a quick look to see if we can get to the battlefield itself. No, it can't. So, thank you for watching. Uh, I will next time make absolutely certain to uh, to get a last shot there, so everybody can see it as it's coming forward. I'll keep a closer eye on the uh, on the time, but I do want to get this one out while the game is new. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, despite uh, despite not having a, a final view um, of the battlefield. It is a little bit of a surprise because we really looked like the Russians had it, but um, something must have taken place right there at the end. Um, but anyway, we'll have more from this game in the coming days, and I'm going to get this one up as soon as possible. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to, to be sure to subscribe and happy gaming everybody.